<laughs> and we had too many chat already. Uh, yeah, this narc. I love that, Nancy. Yes, that is such a great uh, way to say it. Um, okay, so if you're a survivor of narcissistic abuse, you understand that spotting people who do not have empathy is an important skill to foster. And I think it's a great topic for those who are recovering. And the answer to this question is always going to be the same for me. You must heal, 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 H-E-A-L, heal. From the past, narcissistic abuse you've experienced, and then you will never attract narcissistic partner again, period, right? That is the key to heal. Let me just bold heal or italic it and bold it, yeah. Um, but I'm going to give you the answers that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give you the answers that you could just Google, right? Um, I'm going to give you the answers to solve these problems. If you follow what I say and you do the work that I give to you, you're going to get the answers and you're going to get results. And that's the whole key to this, right? Getting the results. So here's the three topics we're going to cover. If we can squeeze them all in. Uh, I will. There you go. And, you know, we always talk about the red flags. And what about the green flags? Who talks about the green flags? So here it is for the Facebook chat. There you go. Um, all right. So let's dive in. The number one, what, what to look for on their social media profile before you even waste your time meeting them? This is such a great question. Um, and again, when you heal from narcissistic abuse, you will tap into your, your intuitive self, your inner self, your trusting self. You will trust yourself more because part of healing is trusting yourself again, right? Part of your healing is forgiveness. Part of your healing is loving yourself. Part of your healing is truth. So when you see, like, for me, because I, I like, even though I've been healing and have healed from narcissistic abuse, I still work on myself every single day. I do not stop. I probably will never stop. I'm to the point now where I can look at a person, see their behavior, a short amount of time, or even if it was a profile and pick up intuitively a yes or a no. And also know what questions to ask. If I was single, thank God I'm not. <laughs> Ladies, you need this help. But if I was single and I was on whatever is the latest dating app, um, this is what I would do. When I would see somebody that I was attracted to, first of all, if you have a physical attraction to this person, this is not what you wanna go off of. You don't wanna go off of the physical attraction. You wanna be attracted to this person oh, because of their characteristics and who they are, not their looks, okay? And I know you're like, well, how am I gonna like, you know, smash cookies together if I'm not attracted to him? I get it. I get it. I'm not saying be grossed out by the person. I'm just saying don't solely focus on physical attraction. Ooh, he's hot. Click. Let me start talking to him. That's, that's what I mean. Don't do that. Okay. So like with my husband, Ray, when we initially met, I was attracted to him, but I wasn't like, <laughs> <laughs> like I was my ex-husband. My ex-husband, I was like that. I was like, ooh, baby, give it to me. And we know what a train wreck that turned out to be. So what I'm saying is, is if I was single and I was swiping left or whatever it is now, um, I would read their profile and see if it's a match. Like, are they a cat person or are they a dog person, right? And then I would ask certain questions to myself to get an intuitive hit of a yes or a no, right? So like, is this person, should I give this a try? Should I message this person? 
wait, just ask, wait for the answer and you'll get an intuitive yes or no, okay? Um, he sounds really interesting, but I'm picking up some red flags here. Is he toxic? Wait and see what comes up. So those are the things you can look for on social media uh, profile before you even, like this person said, waste your time meeting them, okay? Because I remember when I was dating, all of the men that I met that I was like, eh, I already had that feeling before I met them. Either they just weren't a match and I was just doing it for attention or I, I saw I wasn't a match because they just weren't my, like, I just knew like I wasn't attracted to them at all. You have, you got to have some attraction, right? Um, and I went on a date anyway. Oh, that's, that's what I was going to say. I was changing myself to fit what they were looking for. Okay. So one story is I was, uh, talking, I don't think I've met this person. I was talking to somebody over the, that one of the apps, this is back in the day. And he was like, do you, I, he was like, I love like NASCAR racing. Do you like racing? And I was like, oh yeah, I love racing. I don't love racing. I don't hate racing. I could give two bucks about racing. <laughs> I, I don't care about racing. Why did I say that? Why did I say that in that moment? I love racing. Yeah, let's go to the racetrack. Why did I say that? Because I was so desperate for a relationship. I was so desperate for attention. I was so lonely. I just wanted a relationship. I wanted to be with somebody. So, okay, if you like racing, I like racing. But what I was doing in that moment was sacrificing and self-sabotaging myself to once again, mold myself to be who that person likes or wants me to be, just like it did in the past. So rewind, play, if, Given the chance again, if somebody said, if I was single and this whole scenario happened again, and somebody said, I love racing, do you love racing? I would say exactly what I just said to you. I don't love racing. I don't hate racing. I really don't give a fuck about racing. Like, I'll take it or leave it, right? I'm neutral. That's what I would say. Honesty. I, was, I would be, that would be an answer from my authentic self. That would be an honest answer. And that would be standing in my integrity. And this is what the, the, the dating world is full of fakeness, BS, and all of that, right? Just like I just shared with you. So try that. Try that. And if the person is like, oh, well, I got to have a girl who likes racing. Okay. Okay. That's okay. If that's what you choose, that's what you choose. I'm not that girl, right? So try that instead. Okay, was that helpful? Before I move on, I always like to ask if that was helpful. Did that make sense? Do you need more clarity on it? Let me know. Yeah, very much. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. So the next one is what? Three red flags should you be looking for? Should I be looking for? Okay. Is there like only three? <laughs> Is there only three? Um, so the thing about red flags is what's coming up for me is the covert narcissism. Because covert narcissists, they are so sly and so slick that you really notice that they are narcissistic. So I'm going to highlight this. So, um, but the top three red flags that I always share with people is like, is this, okay, I'm going to give you the perfect example. I just did a networking 
one-on-one. Again, I'm at the point in my healing journey where I can pick it up. Like it's like, I'm a magnet, right? I can pick it up. I can pick up narcissism really easy. I had a one-on-one with somebody, another woman that we met in a woman's group. And right off the top, I could feel her energy. This is, this is why loving yourself to the deepest levels is going to catapult you to the person that you probably can't even imagine right now, right? Because you're going to constantly tap into your intuitive side. So just, just meeting this person, I could, um, I could sense masculine energy, a lot of masculine energy with, with her. Um, and the first thing was, as I was introducing myself to this group, hadn't been there in like three years, I was introducing myself. The minute I said divorce, she ran over to me as I'm standing up, introducing myself, Think, visualize this for a second and handed me her card and said she would love to help my clients. What? Like, you couldn't wait. I mean, how long did we get? 30 seconds to introduce ourselves? You couldn't wait 30 seconds till I sat down and then sneak by me or maybe catch me later on? No. Had to do it right there. So that's a clue. That's a red flag. Okay. Um, and so then when we had the one-on-one, she, I already knew where this was going. So I right off the top said, oh, tell me about your business. Right. Cause I already knew it was going to all be about her. It's going to all be about her. So we were on the call for 30 minutes and I got to listen about her business. Never once did she ask me about my business or who could I refer to you? How can I help you? Right. These are the red flags. Is this person person hoarding the conversation? Is this person, every conversation is all about them. Um, Are they showing up as uh, one of two ways, the hero or the victim? That's how narcissists show up. They show up as the hero or the victim. One of two ways, right? So these are the red flags to look for. Are they like, taking over the conversation. Do they ask, Hey, how are you? How have you been? Right. Um, in a networking, in a business situation, right. Just like any relationship give, give and receive, give and receive, give and receive, right. An equal give and receive. Hey, how is your business? What do you do in your business? The person answering should say, we've got 30 minutes for this call. Uh, I'm just going to take 10 minutes and then I'm going to, and what do you do? What is your business? Thank you for asking. Here's what I do. Watch my time, 10 minutes, and then shift it over to the other person. So tell me about your business, right? Because in my mind, we only have 30 minutes for this call, but she didn't do that. This is a red flag. Um, other red flags are like if you're on a date and the person that you're with is like very flirtatious with the servers. Um, oh my gosh, I have so many stories about that. 22 years of, yeah, she wants me. Um, again, hoarding the conversation. It's all about them. It's all about their victim stories. It's all about their heroines stories, right? These are red flags. Okay, that's more than three. I just gave you like five and scenarios. Those are the red flags. Does that make sense? Was that clear? That's huge when you said we are sacrificing ourselves when we begin to mold ourselves to what the other person wants us to be just like we did when we were in with the narc. This is so true for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know this at the time. I didn't know this. I was just, you know, I had no clue. I was just like, yeah, I love racing. (laughs) But now I know this. Now I can see it so clearly because I have healed so much of myself and my past and these scenarios. So now I see it so completely different. Um, And it's, it's amazing. It's fun and it's amazing. 
Okay, so let's move on to, so we covered those two. What are the green flags? This is something that nobody talks about. What are the green flags? What should I be looking for? So this is a great question. And I wanna share it with you. Um, I just saw this post the other day and I was like, oh, this is so good. I need to keep it in my photos. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is right here. Boom, green flags for people in your life. Okay. And again, it's gonna start off with your energy, how you feel around this person, okay? So one of the green flags is their presence is common. So when you're sitting across from this person or when you're emailing this person or when you're thinking about this person, their presence is calming, meaning you feel relaxed around this person. That's a green flag. You don't feel tense. You don't have anxiety, right? You don't, none of those emotions are coming up. None of those feelings are coming up. You feel their presence is calming, okay? Another one is, is they respect your opinion. Oh, this is good. They respect your opinion, especially today. Everybody's got an opinion, right? Um, when you have differences in opinion, whether that's blah, 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 X, Y, Z, nye, 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 who cares? Respect, respect. The person doesn't criticize you and said, oh, you blah, 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 oh, oh, you're one of those. That's disrespectful. That's covert disrespect behavior. Oh, you're one of those. Respect. They respect your opinion. I say it all the time because my daughter and I, we don't agree on some things. And I say, she gets all hot and headed. And I say, it's just, it's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. It doesn't mean anything. Like it shouldn't mean anything to you. It's just my opinion. That's how I feel. That's the way I see it. All right. Number three, they make you laugh. Now this one, because my ex used to make me laugh all the time. Narcissists are jokers. Some of them are jokers. Some of them will make you laugh. So it could be that this person makes you laugh in a genuine way. I'd uh, be careful with that one. Um, here's another one. They are supportive supportive, supportive of your dreams. And you can feel this support, right? Like the support that I have with my husband now is I never like even knew that there was this level of support versus when I was with my ex-husband, because when I, I started some businesses when I was with my ex-husband and he was never supportive of them because he wanted me to run his business. So he was never excited about it. And this one story I specifically remember, I started, I went back to college and I started my chemistry class on the same day that my ex-husband started a new job. He went from air conditioning, um, installations and repair to um, mortgages. He was doing mortgages. This was back when the whole mortgage thing. And um, so we both started something new on the same day. And I remember so vividly, we got into bed that night and I asked, how did your first day go? And he went and he told me about his first day as a mortgage broker or whatever he was, mortgage law, I don't know. And then went to sleep. And I remember thinking even back then, like, wow, you didn't, you couldn't even ask me, like, how was your first day of chemistry? Pretend, pretend to be interested. <laughs> like, I wasn't interested in chemistry. You pretend? No nothing. So they're supportive. And you'll know they're supportive because not only do they ask you those things, because a narcissist could pretend and say, how was your first day? You will feel the energy that this person is genuinely asking you, how was your first day? And being supportive of your dreams. 
It's not a fake. You can pick up on fake. You can, trust me, you can. So those are some green flags. Um, I'll post the rest in this little image here for in our group, Life After Narcissism, the, the, the big group for you guys. Actually, I'll do it right now so I don't forget because otherwise I'll forget. So hold on, let me do that right now real quick. Um, right here and photo. And where was it? It was right here. Boom, post, there you go. All right, so what I have for you, my loves, is I have, I'm doing this masterclass again. Like it was so much fun doing this masterclass, how to win a divorce in a narcissist. So much fun that I'm doing it again, November 11th. Um, and I'm so excited to do this again and to show you like the new version of you versus the old version of you and how you can get out of your shit and move on and win at divorcing a narcissist, whether that's creating a plan to leave, um, hiring a divorce attorney. I'm actually putting um, good divorce attorneys, uh, a list together. And like, I'm going to first start, you know, like with the metro areas um, as a resource. And it'll be completely free for people. I'll put it in a PDF form and there you can have it. Um, also, and these are testimonies by actual clients who had this attorney and one at divorcing a narcissist. So that is coming together right now as we speak. And, um, and then family court, winning in family court. Um, the narcissist is going to drag you to court. They don't care how much they spend. They don't care. They want to make your life miserable. Um, especially if you have children together, even if they're adult children, they're going to try to take the children. That's their number one tool and pawn that they are going to use to try to destroy you. And I'm sorry to be the barrier of bad news, but that's what it's like when you divorce a narcissist. They try to destroy you even more. So it, I am so fucking passionate about helping women and men win at divorcing a narcissist and get more positive results, more positive stories of the narcissist losing. Oh, so sad for you. Oh, me cry. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, so if you've done the master class, you have a free ticket to the next one. If you did it with me, in October, you have a free ticket to the next one. Also, tell your friend about this class. If you know somebody who's in a relationship who's even thinking about divorcing, this masterclass is for you. It's for them. So share this masterclass with them so that they can get the tools that they need to win at divorcing a narcissist. Okay. And then a couple of topics that we'll cover um, next week, next Tuesday is. What behaviors are typical classic red flags? What is a way you could test a person to see if they are a narcissist? These are good. And what kind of a person is attracted to a narcissist? Oh, I love that question. Oh, I'm going to go deep with that one, baby. Oh, that's good. Um, so here's the link for the masterclass that is coming up November. Fifth, there's the link. Here's the link. Here's the link for you, for you to uh, join the masterclass. It's $25. It is a two hour masterclass and I'm gonna give you everything that you need. You also get bonuses when you sign up um, and you get uh, a PDF where all of the steps are like there for you in the PDF. I just give it all to you, man, because I love you and I want you to win at divorcing a narcissist. And that is my goal. So have an amazing Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. He's having tacos. Have an amazing week. And I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>